My name is Asif Masood. I'm the motion and drives engineer with uh, Omron Industrial Automation. And today we'll uh, show you uh, a presentation of our uh, NJ demo system. This is basically uh, the demo we built to promote our new solution, the NJ platform. And the demo consists of the three typical layers in automation system. So you have the HMI layer, the machine control layer, which is doing the logic and the motion. And then all your hard real-time devices. In this case, we have uh, some uh, I.O. and two servo drives and all in EtherCAD. So uh, the, the NJ comes with uh, two built-in uh, boards, the Ethernet IP and EtherCAD. And uh, Ethernet IP is usually used uh, for high-level communication, uh, such as uh, to an HMI or to uh, a PC or controller to controller. Uh, the EtherCAT is mainly for the hard real-time devices s such as uh, digital I.O., uh, servo drives and AC drives and uh, vision. You can have them all in the same network. And the reason Omron uh, chose EtherCAT, uh, very simple. It's uh, one of the fastest networks and uh, it's a real-time network and it's open. So we can add different slaves from different vendors. The architecture we're showing here is uh, our NS screen. Uh, communicates with NJ uh, over Ethernet IP through this hub and then uh, our EtherCAT port from the NJ has uh, four four nodes uh, the first node is a, a GXIO block on EtherCAT and then we go out from the GX into uh, what we call our branching unit uh, and the branching unit allow you to do uh, uh, build, uh, mod build modular machines so instead of having a line topology, you can have a star topology or tree topology. The output of the uh, branching unit, one port is going to the first servo and one, the other one is going to the second servo. Uh, this our uh, high performance G5, uh, both are 100 watt, 100 volts. <coughs> the first one has absolute encoder and the second one is incremental. Uh, so we can talk now about the the high performance for the machine automation, it's not just one component, but all the co three components. So uh, the high performance of the NJ5, uh, <clears throat> the most uh, unique feature we have is uh, we can do the user application and we can do the motion engine and the EtherCAT all in the same uh, perfect uh, synchronized period, which uh, can be as fast as uh, 500 microsecond and, uh, uh, or one millisecond or two millisecond or four millisecond and we can control up to 32 axes in uh, one a millisecond. Uh, this is the uh, controller and it can of course run uh, logic and motion uh, at the same time. Uh, the second layer is uh, EtherCAT, we talked about that, and the third layer is uh, G5. So uh, uh, our G5, uh, you can have a frequency response bandwidth up to uh, two kilohertz, and it has uh, all the advanced algorithms you need for uh, uh, diverse servo problem that you might see. We have the four notch filters, two active at a time. Uh, we have uh, velocity feed forward, acceleration feed forward. We have uh, four damping filters and we have uh, uh, backlash compensation. So it has everything, whatever the problem you will see on the axis. And of course, it also has a built-in a full closed loop if you wanna use an encoder on the load in addition to the motor encoder. So uh, we built this uh, demo to demonstrate some of the basics that the NJ can do, but uh, the NJ can do a lot more than what we showed in our demo. So it's grouped into uh, a discrete motion and then a synchronized motion. But uh, uh, in the discrete motion or independent, we showed a few functionalities. So this is the first time you power up the screen. I will just go to the discrete motion. and. Uh, I will position my two ser servers in a particular position uh, and enable them. Now I can uh, set home to zero this position. Uh, discrete motion is whenever an axis is running by itself, it's not, in flow, it's not following another axis and it's not doing interpolation with another axis. So I can uh, drag the axes and stop them and uh, if you have a fault reset, but uh, other 
uh, discrete motion that we're not showing here that the NJ can do uh, through the G5 servo is uh, uh, we have uh, high speed registration and each G5 has two built in high speed registration uh, done by hardware so it's in a few microseconds uh, we can do cam output where the NJ uh, can fire an output uh, in a specific position and we can do interrupt feed so there's a f few other things that in you can do in independent motion we can control position velocity or torque as well so this screen just uh, so some of what we can do with the discrete motion uh, a typical machine builder will also need to verify the wiring and hardware so we built one screen <coughs> to demonstrate checking the the wiring so uh, each g5 has eight uh, input and three outputs we just wire three of the inputs the home uh, uh, limit switch, the second limit switch, uh, which our uh, registration and uh, negative over travel. So, if you just toggle one, you will see changing on the screen. And of course, if you activate the negative over travel, because it's configured in the drive to cause a fault, so I and I can reset the faults. And uh, we also have the GXIO, so I can toggle them on the screen. And uh, this is another way. So if you have an input wired, you can also see it. So this screen just you validate the wiring. And uh, what we did with the discrete motion, we validated the feedback cable, the network arrangement, the power to the ser uh, servo. <coughs> you basically validated all the hardware. <clears throat> One of the uh, nice features we have for, for a lot of applications, uh, uh, the application would require doing a perfect uh, positional synchronization between multiple servo if you have one axis and you have multiple axes following this axis so this is a uh, gearing or a synchronization which is a position relation so in this case uh, we made a small program and this uh, first servo will be the master and this second one will be the slave so I can uh, enable both the master and the slave and when I enable the gearing it's basically ratio one to one to one so if only the slave is enabled I can move it by hand and show that the slave is following it one to one but can I can also enable the master which is this servo and I can run it and you can see it's following uh, one to one I can go back to my discrete motion and I can change the speed for the master uh, make it 2000 <coughs> and I toggle the drug so it will run 2000 uh, 18,000 is about 3000 rpm so this is still a slow speed it's just to show the concept I just whenever you stop now they should because it's one to one you should see that they're pointing at the same uh, angle and you can recover any time I just remove the jug so the stop and I, I can disable them uh, so this uh, although we're showing two axes but it, uh, the concept applies it doesn't matter how many axes our NJ5 uh, we have 16 32 and 64 axes uh, the second one I want to show is uh, uh, camming so I go to the camming screen and we have uh, a simple profile where uh, again, this first axis will be the master, the second axis is the slave, but every time the master makes uh, 720 degrees or two revolutions, the slave will make uh, only 360 uh, degrees. But during half of this 360 degrees, it will match the speed of the master. So the master will make 720, the slave will make 360, but half of this 360, the speed should match. And we bought a picture of the cam profile and you see the uh, from here to here is where the speed uh, will match of the slave and the master and this is uh, showing the cam table from uh, it's a picture from studio so the way I usually uh, show the camming so people can visualize uh, I put the master pointing uh, up at uh, the 12 o'clock and the slave at 6 o'clock 
but we already home them at the first step. And uh, all I have to do now, enable the slave, enable the master, and then I turn on the camming, and I start dragging or moving the master. But maybe the speed 2000 is very high for people to visually see it, so I wanna go back to the discrete and make the speed only 100 and I toggle it and if I go back to the so what you can see in the screen is uh, every time this makes two revolution this will make one but uh, when the uh, slave and the master at 270 degrees they will match the speed now they're matching the speed up to 90 degrees and then they'll break uh, so this just demonstrate the concept of the camming and uh, for the camming, you can enter points, uh, you can move the points in the screen and do curve fitting. You can con constrain the connecting velocities, acceleration. You can import it from a uh, Excel sheet and you can export it to Excel sheet and it's a, it's a very powerful tool. So now one of the things that uh, might happen in a large machine and we uh, to demonstrate the modularity, if I go to the diagnostic screen, uh, we built this screen so you can see all the ethercat status so you can see all the slaves are connected and okay in this case i have uh, as i mentioned before four slaves node number three node number four node number one and node number two so you should see uh, the first four are okay so for if you have a large machine and you want to power down one section and do maintenance uh, on some section uh, using the branching unit uh, will allow you to do that so in this case uh, my two servers are coming from the branching unit so I can power if this was one section of the machine I can power it down uh, do some maintenance and then when I recover I can uh, continue while the rest of the machine uh, still running so I will disable node 2 while it's doing the cam so as you can see the slave stop uh, we have ethercat uh, it should be flashing uh, with the error number now uh, you can disconnect EtherCAD or even power it down and do maintenance or mechanical. And when you're ready, uh, this could be a uh, few hours or a couple of days, whatever you need to do uh, for the maintenance. And then <clears throat> when you're ready to recover, uh, we allow you to dynamically join the slaves again. So all I have to do is just uh, reset the fault and I say uh, enable the slave. So Again, the NJ is back and talking with this slave. <clears throat> if I want to continue with my camming operation, I can just uh, toggle the cam and it should go back to. So when, again, when you are, uh, uh, you, we can do phasing to adjust where it will join, but it's basically the same idea. The idea is that you can build a modular machine, you can power down section or <coughs> dynamically activate them and uh, we have uh, one of the other uh, we built this data graph so you can see uh, we're just recording the position of the two axes and each is changing between 0 to 360 you can clear it save it to a file import it from a file <clears throat> the one I want to show uh, next is uh, our NS starting at version 8.5 has a built-in <coughs> troubleshooting uh, tool and uh, because uh, NJ has a centralized error reporting and event handling it will record any fault on any node or any operation and basically the NJ has uh, four built-in processes uh, one doing the motion engine one doing the ethercat one doing the ethernet IP and one what we refer to as a PLC so any fault will be categorized in one of these four so for example while I am running my cam uh, I can uh, uh, generate a fault in the drive, the negative over travel. Then I can go to uh, diagnostics. This, what we call NJ troubleshooter, is really uh, built in the NS. Nobody programmed it, so you just have to activate it. And when I go to this uh, NJ troubleshooter, it should collect uh, the faults. So as you see here, this is the four processes I mentioned, PLC, motion, Ethercat, Ethernet IP, and the one with the motion has the uh, red on it. So if I click on the motion, it, it's telling me that you have an access error 
and then I go to the axis, and it's the exact error I caused is a negative uh, negative input uh, over travel on this servo. So you can clear it from here, but this is very valuable because the, the customers, if people make changes every two, three months, the customer doesn't have to worry about it. He has built in, he can read all the diagnostics up to date without hard coding any values. And if we keep adding faults or alarms, it's automatically done for him. So I, a lot of people find this one is really uh, powerful. I can reset the error and go back. So if I want to drag it again, I can continue. So that's, uh, we don't have, we didn't build uh, a screen to demonstrate the linear interpolation, but that's uh, the third category that for motion capabilities uh, that the NJ can do. And in the near future, we will have the kinematics to do the Delta three uh, robots, but it's not in this version. Thank you.